Witches were a big part of Macbeth. They not only advanced the story throughout the play, but also started it with a prophecy. They gave Macbeth the sense of self-entitlement, made him overconfident, greedy, and started him on his journey to near insanity. The three apparitions made him even more overconfident, stating that no man, woman, or child would ever harm him, making him sound unstoppable. The third apparition also made it seem like no one would ever go against him or raid the castle. The witches started him on this journey to become the king, but also started him on the journey to his downfall. Prophecy made him believe he could be something more and something more powerful. But the apparitions also made him believe he was invincible and overconfident and was a key part in his downfall. Tell me, old oh, tower. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Bad. 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 Beware of tower. Beware of him, Wherever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast hopped my fear aright. But one word more. The three apparitions are major contributors to Macbeth's downfall. The first apparition states that Macbeth should fear Macduff. Macbeth then realizes that Macduff is allowed to speak to him. However, the second apparition somewhat contradicts the previous one. It states that Macbeth is immortal and cannot be harmed. Upon hearing this, Macbeth disregards the first apparition and gains the confidence to confront and kill Macduff. The third apparition foretells that Macbeth cannot die until the great Burnham Wood moves the high Dunstan Hill near his castle. We later see that this prophecy is true. Thou liest, thou shaggier villain. He has killed me, mother. Run away, I pray you. In this quote, the fame of Fife's wife, Lady Macduff, is attacked by Macbeth's hired assassins. They first kill her son, and then her, with brutal prejudice. Macbeth, at this point, has become increasingly unstable, especially after seeing the witches again. The prophecy that had set him against the Thane of Fife has been revealed. His hands were not bloody in this attack, however. Not like the first time he had committed an act of murder. He sank even further below that by using others to do his dirty work, killing an innocent child and his mother, directly breaking the rules of morality. This part of the play is the beginning of Macbeth's death, bringing about his own destruction by killing the family of the only one that can destroy him, so says to the prophecy. The blood of his wife and son on Macbeth's hands will drive Macduff mad with grief and ambition for revenge. To cleanse the spilled blood with Macbeth's spilled blood. Sir, amen. Stand scoping where it did? Alas, poor country. Almost afraid to know what's said. It cannot be called our mother for Where nothing, but who knows nothing, is once seen to smile. Where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are made, not marked, where violent sorrow seem to modern existence. The dead man's now is there scarce ask for food, and good men's lives expire before their flowers and their cats, dying or ear their sick. This quote reflects the Beth's leadership of Scotland and his failure to successfully lead the nation he so desperately wanted to lead as a king. Gloss exposes the audience to the other point of view of the best leadership. He explains how Scotland's people live their lives in song and refers the country to a land where you aren't born, but where you die. This quote explains Macbeth's ignorance to the responsibilities of being the king of Scotland. Because Macbeth obtained his royalty in vain, He's too preoccupied maintaining his power and keeping a clean image to actually run the country properly. Not only has Macbeth's withering sanity left him alone, hated by his old friends, but also left the country falling. 
your castle is surprised, your wife and babe savagely slaughtered, to relate the manner whereon the quarry of these murdered deer, to add to the death of you. Merciful heaven, what man, never pull your hat upon your brows, give me sorrow words, that grief that does not speak, whispers the overfraught heart, and bids its break. What, my children too? Macduff finding out that his family had been slain was a big impact in the story. It not only showed how little Macbeth has sung, but also led to Macduff craving revenge. He wanted revenge for his wife and his child, so he gave a small army and he raided his castle. It led to the final battle, and it was the final apparition that ultimately led to Macbeth's murder in battle. The combination of the apparition making Macbeth overconfident, how crazy he has become, and the slaying of Macbeth's family was a big factor in At first, Macduff didn't want it, he wanted to grieve. Malcolm suggests revenge to kill him and to take back the film from all Scotland to It shows Macbeth that he was in his power, it was a giant part of his downfall and the story.